So this is lesson five, and this is one of my favorite lessons. It's called Simplify. And one way you understand the difference between material consciousness or material life and spiritual consciousness or yoga consciousness is by the level of satisfaction you experience within your own heart or within your own soul. And now in our society today, we're all well aware that the way the economy works. The economy works if people keep buying things they don't really need. So there's a lot of stuff out there that we don't need and these companies are really expert at designing products that don't have all the features that the next product will have so that we go crazy when the new one comes out and we want to throw away the old one and get the new one feeling that the one I have is just not quite good enough and I really need the other one besides my best friend had just got the other one and they're raving about it. And so we're impressed, impregnated, controlled, brainwashed by consumerism. And then we're made to feel like, you know, you're not happy because you don't have enough. And we've been conditioned to believe if you have more, it's better, right? More is better, bigger is better. Yeah, you know, like my house is only this big. If I get a house that's this big, that house must be better. And this car is this big. And if I get this big, it's better. And my bank balance is only this big. If it goes this big, it's better. Everything bigger is better. Now, I'm from America. So we have a phenomenon in America, which is quite interesting, especially in light of the fact that I travel ar around the world and I've been to many very poor countries where people live extremely simple lives. And I've noticed something quite interesting, and I'll tell you. Would you like to hear? I think you would. In America, we have what are called little housing developments where there are many, 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 many housing units right together, but they don't house people. They house stuff. They house, they house stuff that people have that people can't fit in their house that people can't fit in their closet, that people can't fit in their garage, that people can't fit in their little storage box outside in their backyard. They have these little subdivision communities for stuff that people can't find any place to put, that they really don't need, that they've accumulated over the years. And those storage units are nicer than a lot of homes that people have in third world countries that these people don't even have a, as nice a place to live as we have a nice a place to put the things that we don't even need, that we overbought. Another interesting experience that I have, and I wish I could bring you to see this. Well, well actually, I could bring you if you want to come because we do tours of India, sacredindiaretreats.org, sacredindiaretreats.org, and what we do is we go to, not always, but in part of the trip we go into villages. And then you get to see how people are living in villages and they're living so simply. You can't even imagine how simply they live. But what I find significant about it is when you see their face, you see this expression of satisfaction and happiness that you don't see on the faces of people in the Western world, even the faces of the very wealthy, even the faces, faces of the very famous, even on the faces of the people who live in lap of luxury, who are so happy that they have to drink to cope with their happiness, right? Kind of interesting, I think, you know, when you see how much we have, and then I have to go out and drink alcohol just to like deal with everything, with my life. Well, I have to dull my brain because my brain is pain is so much in pain, my heart's so much in pain, I have to drink enough so I don't feel the pain, even though I have all this stuff, which is supposed to make me happy. So it becomes very frustrating to live a life like that. And then you see these people who are living this simple life and they're so happy. They're so bright, they're so genuine. And they're satisfied. And you look at them and say, how could they be satisfied, but they are. They just appreciate what they have. And in our lives, if we want to be more spiritual, we have to learn how to appreciate whatever we have, whatever comes naturally and simply, and not go crazy trying to accumulate things that we really don't need with the thought, if I just have this one thing, then I'll be happy. But how many times have we said that? 
How many times have we gotten this one thing? A lot. We've gotten a lot of those one things, and we're still saying just this one thing. Now, to end this section, I want to tell you something which I find extremely interesting. It's from the Bhagavad Gita. And the Bhagavad Gita explains that when a person is not in simple consciousness, or what we're calling here simplify your life, when they're not in that consciousness, they're in a consciousness which is influenced by a certain aspect of this world which the Gita calls Rajagun, or the mode of passion. It's an influence, a subtle psychological influence. This is Vedic or Indian psychology. And it's a force, which, which, a force within nature which causes us, and we all have experience of this, to think, if I just have this, I'll be happy. And we get it, and then we think, if I just have this a little more, I'll be happy. And we get it, and we think, if I just have it a little more, I'll be happy. And what the Gita says, it's an endless cycle. It's an endless cycle. It'll never end. The more will never satisfy. It'll just keep going and going and going. And so people who practice yoga understand this principle. And when the mind starts saying, if you just have this, you'll be happy, the yogi understands, no, this is the effect of Rajagun, and it doesn't matter how many of these I have, I won't be happy. And then at that point, you actually just calm down. You can live very peacefully. So, what I think you all should do tomorrow, do something really cool. Go into your favorite store and walk through and walk out and don't buy anything. And go, I don't need any of this. I'm a yogi. Poo-poo it all. Live, live. You may not want to do that, but it would be fun to do that, don't you think? Anyway, understand. Look at the world. See things and see, you know, what do I ask yourself? What do I really need? What do I really need? And as we said in the first, second lesson, the soul by nature is ananda, it's blissful. So the happiness we seek is not going to come from things. Things don't fulfill the need within us. There's a spiritual need. It's like, it's like take a mirror, take something to eat, hold up the mirror and put it in the mirror in your mouth. That doesn't work. It works if you want to go on a diet, I guess. But if you actually want to satisfy your hunger, it's not going to work. So much of what we do in our life is like we're trying to satisfy a need that can't be satisfied the way we're trying to satisfy it because it's a spiritual need. So we're feeding the mirror, not feeding the person. We're feeding, trying to feed the physical, but it's not satisfying the spiritual. So simplify. You'll be happy. Live with less. You'll have more money in the bank. You'll spend less. You can give more charity. You can do more service to others. Don't always think about what I want, what I need. Don't be so self-centered. It's a miserable life. Simplify. Think of others. As they say, keep it simple, stupid. In India, we call the spiritualist the sadhu. So we're going to change that and say, keep it simple, sadhu, or keep it simple, yogi. But that doesn't sound like kiss. So we'll say, keep it simple, sadhu. Until next time, keep it simple. Sadhu. So